Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about structure of DBMS. DBMS is a software that allows access to the data stored in the database and provides the easy and effective way to handle defining of the information, storing the information, manipulating the data, protecting it, differentiating the access permissions to users, so many things. So we have learned that DBMS is very, very crucial to the application users, end users, because they comprehend the semantic structures and physical location of the data. They do not require the user to depend upon how it is internally stored or how it is being designed. Now, because of all these things and because of the enormous data that it handles, we need to have a very, very sophisticated structure for the DBMS. Let us first see the basic components of the structure. The structure of the DBMS is also known as the DBMS architecture or architecture of DBMS, which is divided into three components, the query processor, storage manager and the disk storage. Let us look into this architecture diagram to have a clear idea of what are these categories. Looking at the topmost level, we have got different DBMS users. The users are of different type starting from the database administrator to the Navy user who just accesses the DBMS through some of the application programs or web applications. The major parts of this particular structure is a query processor, the storage manager and the disk storage. Now, what are these components or what are these basic categories defined of? Let us look into the query processor. The query processor basically interprets the user request and through the application program and converts them into a machine level language which can be understood by the storage manager and which can retrieve the data. So, coming back to the diagram if we see, the query processor is the level which is just below the users. That means, the database administrators and the analyst that is the sophisticated users directly handle the database or they directly query the database. Whereas, the application programmers, the end users handle or they access the database through these application programs or the so called user interfaces. Now, when that query is given to the database, it is the responsibility of the query processor to convert them into the actual instructions to be handled by the database. Coming back to the components, we see that the components of the query processors are DDL interpreters, DML compilers, query evaluation engine and query optimizer. Let us get back to the structure. What is this DDL interpreter? DDL talks about the definition or the schema of the database. When the database administrator designs the structure, this particular thing is handled by the DDL interpreter where the creation and storage of the data. That means, it is responsible for the structure and the metadata. What is metadata? It is data about the data. For example, I say a student table contains student number, name and CGPA. So, student number may be an integer or it can be a text field, name is again a text, whereas coming to the CGPA, it may be a real number with decimal point. So, I store that information in the data dictionaries in the actual storage because it talks about the schema, the data and the metadata. Coming to this uh, query, DML queries, this is all about end user request for something. It may be the select statement, the insertion statement, deletion, update, all these things are converted and given by the DML queries are converted and organized by the DML compiler and given to the query evaluation engine. Now, what is this query evaluation engine? 
A particular problem can be handled in multiple ways, more than one way. There may be multiple plans. So the query evaluation engineer designs the plans for extracting or for compiling or fulfilling the DML commands. Now the query optimizer is going to select one among them or otherwise the best plan from this particular query evaluation engineer. So DML compiler converts the DML statements into machine readable object code and enable execution whereas query evaluation engine evaluates the statement which before sending it to the, the query result it is going to evaluate it and query optimizer is going to determine the most effective technique to carry out the query. This is all about the query processing. Coming next, the second part or second level of the structure is the storage manager. Now, what does this do? Storage manager acts as an interface between the top level and the innermost, the internal level, the low level that is the actual storage. So, storage manager acts as the interface between, provides the interface between the data stored in the database and the queries received. So, queries are the top level, storage is the lowest level. So, what are the various components here? We deal with file manager, buffer manager, authorization and integrity manager and the transaction manager. Let us get back to the structure. Buffer manager, the data is actually stored in the disk, whereas for processing it has to be brought to the main memory. We all know this fact that main memory size is much lesser compared to the disk storage. I cannot bring all the data, so the buffer manager is responsible for getting the data from the disk manager and caching it for the usage for faster access. Coming to the file manager, this is responsible for the actual storage. When we talk about the data, it has to be internally stored in the disk as per the basic operating system, the underlying operating system file structure. So, regardless of whether the record what we want to access in the first position or I is in the first position or in the last position, we will not be able to control how it is stored, how it is access is controlled, but storage is again as per the underlying operating system. So, that is handled by the file manager. The next one is our authorization and integrity manager. Authorization deals about the permissions like which user can access what, how, whereas integrity talks about the constraint. Say for example, I am handling bank uh, database and there is a restriction of minimum balance. I have to make sure that my transaction, if it results in reduced minimum balance or is below the minimum balance, then that has to be stopped. So, such kind of integrity management is taken care by the authorization and integrity manager. Coming to the transaction manager, this is also one of the very, very important storage manager task which ensures that the database is in the consistent state at any moment. That means, in spite of the software failure or system failure before the transaction, after the transaction, any time you see the data should be consistent. Added to that concurrent user, DBMS allows concurrent user parallel usage, more than one user can access the database at the same time, but you have to ensure that data is consistent, data is not lost. So, that concurrency control is also one of the tasks of the transaction manager. The last part of this is called as the disk storage. When we talk about the disk storage, this is the lowermost base or the lowermost level where DBMS can use different kinds of data structures as a part of the physical system implementation for the disk storage. Now, what are these data structures that it uses? The data structures are the data files, data dictionaries and the indices. Data files as we all know it is the file which actually stores the data, the simple structure which stores the data. 
coming to the data dictionary, this contains the information about the structure of any database object. That means we call it as the metadata. It is a repository of information that governs the metadata. We already discussed metadata is nothing but data about the data. I have stored a table, then I have fields in that table, what data type, what is the integrity constraint into that field, all these information is stored as metadata in data dictionaries. So, data dictionary gives you the meaning of that particular table that you have created. Coming to the indices, indices are nothing but like an index in your textbook. Whenever you want any particular ta topic, you need not search through the whole textbook, rather you can go through the index and access that page number directly which ensures quicker access. Same way, indices are used to access and retrieve the data in a very fast and efficient way. So, when we talk about the database structure, it is divided into three components, query processor, storage manager and finally, the disk storage. So, overall, to summarize, the structure of a DBMS is designed to provide a high level abstraction to the user. What do you mean by that? That is, you are able to retrieve the data without knowing the background of it, allowing the low level implementation details to be managed effectively. Everything is put in such a way that user need, or otherwise we spoke about data independence. Ensuring the data independence, you are given a high level of sophisticated management which includes even the minute details of storage. So, this allows the users to focus on the logical organizers of the database without worrying about the physical implementation. How it is stored, how it is accessed, user need not bother. When we are talking about designing the databases, you only concentrate about its structure. Modifying the structure will not affect the user access or otherwise modifying the storage will not affect the logical structure. So, remember the sophisticated structure of the DBMS ensures all the advantages that we have spoken about in our earlier topics. Thank you.